Hey guys, VFX Bro here, and welcome to a brand new, exciting tutorial, unlike anyone I've ever done in the past. And the reason for that is that this is my first motion graphics tutorial. Now, about a year ago, I saw this video called Alphabetic by Ariel Costa that I just thought was so awesome that I had to learn motion graphics. So I spent the last year learning motion graphics, doing all kinds of research. Now I'm here to show you the light. Motion graphics can be used in all kinds of situations to help with your projects. Whether or not you're using them for strictly motion graphics videos or adding them into live action footage, motion graphics can be very helpful in getting your point across and delivering your message in digital media. So I'm gonna go ahead and start out with a pretty basic tutorial on this project by my good friend Paul Slemmer from Verosity and we're going to show you how to do a simple animation using shape layers and texts and also how to get the stylized look that they did in this specific example. I have some more detailed training on vfxbro.com if you're interested in learning how to master shape layers, but this is gonna go through a lot of the practical functions of shape layers for motion graphics. Let's go ahead and get started here. We have this clip here that was made by Paul and we can see some awesome animations going on here and they all have the same look and we're gonna show you how to get that look. It's the stylized look where it looks like everything's being kind of drawn on. We're gonna use this first animation because it has this V here for VFX. We're not gonna completely abandon our visual effects roots even though we are doing motion graphics. So let's go ahead and make this first animation here by hitting Command N. I'm gonna create a new composition and I'm going to Make it 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second. We're gonna leave it at nine second duration. Hit okay, so we've got this new composition here. And let's start off with our animation. So I'm going to click here and make a V. We're using the Arial Bold font. And I've created this V, I'm gonna bring up the scale. I hit S for scale there. And I've got this V, let's make it a little bit bigger. Something like that. And we can use this title action safe tool here to help us find our center. Right around there looks good. Let's go ahead and go through how we're gonna animate that V on. Let's take this and we're gonna go layer, create shapes from text. So we've converted this text into a shape layer. And I'm gonna delete that bottom layer there. And I'm going to hit P for position and set a keyframe. And I'm gonna move about a second in here. And then at that point, the V is going to slide to the left. And let's slide it around this much. And I'm going to animate easy ease in here. So we've got that moving in just like that. Maybe we want it to happen a little bit faster. Now I can take this, go to my first frame here and duplicate it. I'm gonna hit U to bring up all my keyframes at my position here. And I'm going to delete that position as well as this. And I'm gonna drag it underneath and set it to alpha mat inverted. So it's gonna make everything disappear, which is totally fine. But then if we hit play, we can see that it starts to reveal it. And that looks pretty good. We can see that it extends longer because the width of this V here on the side in our aerial bold font is not as long as the positional change that we had here in our X direction. So what I can do here is select this bottom layer go into our contents, click on our V, and we have our path here. Again, if you don't understand this, if you feel like I'm moving a little bit fast, you can check out the shape layers training on vfxrow.com where we, we go through all this into detail in a way that you can understand exactly what's going on here. Path right here. And then at this point where it stops, when it stops, which is right here, we're going to drag these left two frames all the way to this end. And then we can actually drag these two all the way here. And I wanna take this guy and bring it up so that it matches something like that looks good. There we go. And there we have our V animating on. Awesome, and that's been all done in these two different shape layers. If we want, we could pre-compose this and call it our V. And now we have it in one layer. Okay, now let's move on to our squiggle. So I'm gonna turn this off for now, and I'm going to create a new shape layer, which will be a circle. 
and I'm going to drag it out here. I'm going to hold down my space bar to move it around. And so I'm holding shift to make it bigger or smaller and space bar. If I want to move it around, let's set it right there in the center. I'm going to hit S for scale, set a keyframe for my scale, drag it out to the first frame. And then here I'm going to bring my scale down right there. So we have this animation of the circle getting smaller. Awesome. And now I can create a new shape. Make sure nothing is selected. And I'm going to start my new shape up here. Make sure the Roto Bezier tool is not turned on. And make it into this nice tadpole looking shape. And end it off right there. Now I can go here into my contents, into my shape. Under my transform, I'm going to click on the rotational keyframe. I'm going to move a second into where this point where it gets all the way small, and I'm going to rotate it one and a half times around. Right around there looks good. And easy ease that in. So I'm going to set this keyframe, easy ease in, and go to my graph editor and just grab this out, drag this out a little bit. So now we have this thing spinning around. Awesome. I'm going to go here into my path and set a keyframe for my path, turn off my graph editor, drag this to our first frame, and then I'm going to go here to my last frame where it's all the way done animating around. I'm going to select all of this and move it closer in here towards the circle, center of the circle, and I'm going to make sure this is still aligned to my path. And I can make it shorter if I want. Just make sure that it's nice and smooth. And so there we have that moved in. And now we can go into frames in between these. Make sure that this droplet is aligned to our circle, but also add some variations. So let's say I want to make it pretty long here. And then I'm just going to drag this out and make sure that it's still aligned to our circle. And then maybe we right here, we want it to turn into a nice fat little ball. So there we have the circle animating around. Awesome. Now I can take my circle layer underneath and delete it because I no longer need that. Take my shape layer here and add a fill to it. So I'm going to click on the fill here. Just make it yellow for now. I'm going to turn off my stroke. There we have that circle animating around. Awesome. And we can turn this V back on. Now we're going to line this up so that it goes into the V. So we have this spinning around and right here is where we want our V to start. So I'm going to drag my V off until this point. And then I'm going to take the position of my little blob here and move it down to the left. Let's see, we want it to start right here. So I'm actually going to move this keyframe over. And then I can move this right here so that it starts right there. And then by this point, it should be fully animated in right here. And we can move this further back. There we go. We place it behind. We can see that now it animates into that V. Awesome. Okay, we have that first part done. I'm going to pre-compose this, call it animation. And we can make them all the same color if we want, like in the original video. So I'm going to use my fill stroke, drag it on top, and just make it a nice gray color. Hit OK. Now we can see that everything is gray. Okay, now I'm going to take my bottom texture here, which you can download on vfxbro.com. Or if you want to just look for a texture similar to this on Google, you could do that as well. We have our bottom texture. Now we're going to create our stylized look here. So we have our background. And what we want to do is create the uh, film grain that we had before. So I'm going to hit Command Y and call this film grain. I'm going to go here into my fractal noise and just drag that on top there. I'm going to go here into my contrast and bump this up to 450. So now we have a lot of contrast here, which is good. I'm going to take my brightness and bump this all the way up to 250 so that we can't even see the blacks anymore. At least we can't, at least we don't think we can see them. If I could go here into my evolution options, I'm going to set a, an expression here for my random seed, alt click on it and type in time times 24, which means that every frame, because we have 24 frames per second, 
this random seed number is going to change. And if you don't know about expressions, that's not a big deal, but you can learn more on my expressions essentials training on vfxrow.com. But if I play through this now, we can see that we're going to have little fragments of film grain popping on every couple of seconds. So we can see in, this, in the side here we have little pieces and that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to set it to a blend mode of multiply so that our white is no longer visible but our blacks will be. And now we have the film grain added on and if we wanted to add more we could simply take this film grain and duplicate it. So now we have it twice as much. And if we go through frame by frame here, we can see we have this little film grain piece that was added on right there. And we've got tons of tiny little fragments that, that subtly add this stylized look to our project. Okay, now let's add some movement. And in order to do that, we're going to create a new null object. We're going to call it controller. And now I'm going to go here into my effects and presets and type in slider. Double click on the slider so that it's added on to this null object. I'm going to call this wiggle amp. And then I'm going to drag it on here and call it wiggle speed. And then I can go here. I have my animation and I'm going to hit P for position on my animation. And then I'm going to drag down my wiggle amp and my wiggle speed. I'm going to set another expression here where I make a wiggle expression and my first value here will be my wiggle speed and then my wiggle amplitude which is the number of pixels that this layer will be wiggling and then click off and now if I go in here into my controller I can change my wiggle amplitude to something like 5 and my speed to something like six and now six times a second this layer is going to wiggle five pixels and so it's hard to see until we have a still animation but we can see now we have some slight movement going on with the V after it moves around it gives it this nice kind of right on look which is what we want for this specific style okay and now let's say we wanted to add some text I'm going to show you some other examples here of how we can get different styles. I'm going to call this visual effects. So let's use a font here, a cool font that's called Mathi. I don't really know what that means, but I'm going to scale it up here so we can just see what happens when we do this. Let's say we wanted to add in visual effects here. We've got that layer. I'm going to make it gray. And we're going to add some style to this text here. And we could add this to anything. We could add this to a shape layer. We could add this to the V if we wanted to. I'm going to hit Command Y and I'm going to call this Line Texture. And then I'm going to go here into my effects and presets and also add Fractal Noise to it. I'm going to go here into my Brightness and boost it up to 43. I'm going to go into my transform and bring the scale down to 10. So we've got this TV noise look going on and we can go here into our evolution and set another key framed expression. We're going to call this time times 24. And now if we play through this, we get this noise going on, which is exactly what we want. Now I'm going to take this line texture and pre-compose it. Make sure I move all my attributes into the new composition and hit OK. Now I can turn that line texture off and I have my visual effects text here. I'm going to take my channel set matte filter, double click on it, and now I can go here and set it to line texture. Make sure that it's affecting the luminance. Turn off the stretch matte and pre-multiply matte. And now we can see that we have this texture added on to this visual effects text here, which gives it this nice right on effect. And now I can go here to this expression that I created before, hit command C to copy it, and then go on to my text here, hit P for position, alt click and command V to paste it on there. So now the visual effects text is going to be wiggling around as well. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this into a shape layer. And all of my properties have been transferred over to this other shape, which is totally cool. And if I wanted to, I could add some wiggle to this text by going to wiggle paths and go here into my wiggle paths 
bring the size down to something like three and the detail down to something like two and maybe the detail even further down. Let's try point f two. Bring the size down to one and bring our wiggles per second all the way up to 15. And now if I solo this layer, let's take a look at what's happening. We get some cool movement going on. I can also add a roughen edges filter on top and we can just mess with the settings here. We can bring the sharpness down probably to 0.15. Again, we're going to have to mess with the, the settings for every different layer depending on the line thickness just so that we get the correct amount of bleeding. So that looks good. And let's just grab the set mat, bring it underneath so we get that texture there. And there we have the visual effects text. And let's zoom out here and unsolo it. And there we have our visual effects text. I want to bring the border up probably a little bit more, maybe five. Okay, and then finally I'm going to draw one last line just to further demonstrate how we can get this look. Let's say I wanted this line to come up from this side. So I'm going to turn my Roto Bezier tool on. So I'm just going to draw another line here. I'm going to select my pen tool, make sure I have nothing selected in my timeline. And draw a nice line that comes up here. Okay, so we have that loop -dee there. And I'm going to take my fill again and turn it off. Hit OK. Go into my stroke. Turn my stroke on and maybe bring my stroke width down to something like seven. And let's try leaving it right there for now. We have this visual effects text and the stroke that comes in. I'm going to take my contents here and I'm going to add a trim paths effector onto this shape layer. And I'm going to keyframe my end, bring it down to zero. And just take that and bring it back a couple of frames and then course bring it out like that. I'm going to solo this layer just so that I can see what's going on with it play back faster. And so we have this line that's coming in. That looks cool. Maybe I want it to ease into its final position so I'm going to go easy ease in. Go here into my graph editor. Just drag this out. There we get a nice smooth exit. And then I want to take the end of this cap here and round it off. So I'm going to go here to my shape. My stroke and I'm going to change the cap to rounded cap and now if we look in here we can see we have a rounded cap on the end there. Now I have the shape layer and of course I could add a little bit of wiggle to it if I wanted to go to my wiggle paths again and change the size down to something like three, the detail down to two and make it a smooth wiggle. Change the wiggles per second up to 15 and we can see we have some nice organic wiggling here that looks pretty cool. And then again, I'm going to take the effects that I had on my visual effects outline here, the rough and edges and the set mat, copy those right onto this line here, hit paste. And now I have the same effect added on there. Really cool. Then we can also add our positional expression. So I'm going to copy it right here. And on this guy, I'm going to hit P for position, alt click on the position, stopwatch, paste it. And now it's going to be moving around as well. And if I scrub through this here, there we have the line coming on, animating and moving around. And then if we want it to not show where this V is, really simple, we're going to create another map. We're going to create a new mat layer. We're going to call this our line mat. And we're going to turn it off so that we don't see it. And we're just going to come in here and create a mask right around this V where we don't want this to show. And now we can just simply set alpha mat inverted and it's going to delete that part. And then of course we can add in some other stylized effects. For example, if we want this blob to pop out a little bit, I can go back here into my animation composition, select the shape layer. I'm going to go layer, layer styles, drop shadow. So I, now I have a drop shadow underneath and I can take it, go here into my drop shadow settings, bring the opacity down a bit, maybe to 50% 
and I'm going to give it some more distance. Let's try 10. So there we have a nice drop shadow for that guy, which just helps it stand out a little bit more. So there we have the tutorial on the bottom line style effect here using motion graphics in After Effects. Again, I have more in-depth training on VFXBro.com where we go into shape layers. We're going to be having some other awesome training coming up here pretty soon. So be sure to check that out. If you have any other questions, feel free to shoot me a message on VFXBro.com or on my Facebook page, Facebook.com slash VFXBro. Until next time, take care. Thank <laughs> you.